From Banksy to pushing ice around the city, the Art in the Public Sphere module covers anything that could be considered art and analyzes the impact it has on public life. Key topics include memorials, gentrification, and digital art, like memes. And the discussions are led by the wonderful, drum roll please, Raphael Schachter. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, um, I wanted to ask, how would you define art and what is specific about art in the public sphere? Great question. Thanks, Vianney. OK, so how would I define art? Well, so I, it would depend if I was coming from an anthropological perspective, as my course does, or talking more generally, because obviously there are general kind of understandings of art, which generally kind of mean things that are often like pretty or well drawn or artistic, so that stuff that um, we kind of consider art as we've learned that through uh, our general education, uh, primary school, secondary school, etc., where a definition of art is created, which is often based on uh, paper, canvas, drawing, painting, um, and then kind of moving out to think about performance as well, so like the arts in a wider sense, theatre performance. From an anthropological perspective, art, uh, as considered by Alfred Gell, who's one of the key scholars that we um, look at in my course, and one of the key scholars for material culture in more general, art can really be almost anything. So really, we have a very, very wide conception of art. In the same way, within you know art theory as well, art can also be considered almost everything anything. So from the age of Duchamp, from like the 1920s, when he had a urinal and he placed that urinal in an exhibition space and said, this is art. Even from that point, so a hundred years ago, we've already been at a place where really anything that the artist chooses can be art. And we're widening that out in anthropology even further. So really the definition is extremely wide. But as you'll see when we do the course together, it's also about something that can change the way you think, that's difficult to transact, difficult to exchange, and that becomes something embedded within wider social relationships. Great, thank you. Now, I wanted to ask you, how do you choose the readings and the art examples you use in your lectures? Okay, so the course is split over nine weeks, um, and that's kind of changed over the five years I've been doing the course. And really it's trying to get kind of a wide scope um, of all the different kind of key themes I think are important at, but important when looking at art in the public sphere. So in terms of the case studies we use, really that just comes from both kind of my general knowledge of art, just through my kind of work as both a curator and a writer, um, but also through research. So, you know, I'm constantly doing new research to try and uh, find examples that both can help influence the way that I think about the course, but it also can help to kind of... Um, uh, extrapolate and further define the ideas of the course itself. In terms of the readings, um, because the course is quite interdisciplinary, um, that it's an anthropology course, but it, can, it also considers themes from architecture, archaeology, art history, critical theory. I try to ensure that every week we have at least one core anthropological reading, but also readings coming from different uh, disciplines that help to explain the topic itself. So, for example, if we're doing gentrification, then we're going to be leaning on urban studies more than, or and maybe architectural theory. Uh, if we're doing memory, we're going to be leaning on cultural heritage or heritage studies. So, really, it's trying to kind of get kind of a rounded um, kind of perspective each week, and also perspectives from different positionalities, and so not just a kind of a singular perspective that we're taking on these ideas. Great, yeah, the interdisciplinary interdisciplinary, and the different perspectives, I definitely see that coming through in the lectures, yeah. yeah. So what do you hope prospective students will gain from this module? So one of the things that I love about the course um, is that, I, so I have a lot of outputs. So as I said, I write, uh, I, I lecture, you know, do talks, um, I curate exhibitions, you know, I do, I've made films. And with all my outputs that I, that I do, the thing about this course that I love is the kind of direct uh, and quite immediate changes that I can see uh, within the students to take the course. In that, what I love about the course is that we're talking about quite complex themes, but they're really grounded in the everyday. 
So they're grounded in the street just outside your front door. You know, from the moment from the moment you step out into the city to the moment you get to wherever you're getting, you're kind of you're imbued within these kind of particular arguments, particular ways of thinking about the world that manifest themselves in the street, in the public art of the city, but also in the way the city itself just functions. So what I love about this course is that it makes people, as much as myself, just kind of stop for a second and look around and start to understand how many key issues related to gender, race, ethnicity, ability, that are all created within the city and that are not just reflecting other ideas, but that are created through the city itself. So, so that's what I love about the course. Not only does it give you a good understanding about the city, a good understanding about art, but from the years of doing it, it it does have it it for the well not for everyone of course but for those that that really are into it, it does change the way people think about the world around them. And for me, that's really the essence of what anthropology is. Yeah, definitely. I think like in our tutorials, I felt really free to just express myself and my own experiences with you and with other students. And I feel like this module really encouraged re reflexivity, you know, reflecting on your own experiences within the city, within the public sphere. And I keep bringing this up with you in our tutorials, but when we talked about um, public toilets mm. and mm. women's toilets, mm. and why do women take longer in mm. toilets compared to men? And we talked about, well, you elaborated on how it, it's structured. You know, there's just more urinals and the cubicles for men but there's just the same space allocated to men and women, but women only have the cubicles. Mm. So it's, it's not designed for women, you know, it's designed according That's to- Equality versus equality debate, exactly. Yeah. There's equal amounts, but it's not egalitarian. I think that's it. I think that reflexivity is the perfect, you know, thing that I, I kind of want to get in that anthropology is something that is done, not something that is just read about. Like, what I what I love about the course at UCL is that from year one, students are engaging within doing field work themselves, like the doing of anthropology, which for me is so important because your perspectives, each individual student's perspectives will always bring a huge amount to the themes and the theories and the literature that they're reading about. Yeah, anthropology is a human centered, you know, we use the body and we use ourselves as our primary research tool. Like we go places into the world and conduct research, but we is totally understand, like we totally understand that it's a subjective discipline because of that. We can't simply eradicate the fact that we have each been brought up in a society with particular norms, educating structures that define who we are and then, then make us understand the world in a particular way. So the more we're reflexive about that and the more we understand how we see the world, the easier it then is to understand how others see the world too. Mm, very true. So do you have any final comments for pr pr prospective students coming in and who are interested in taking the module? So this is this is your time to shine. Go I, ahead. I think it's it's just a really great course. For, for me, it's the other way around in that in the, I learn so much from the students who are taking the course. You know, each year, I really feel that I'm able to refine the course every year through what I learned from the students who are participating in it. So I think the reason I do love the course is that, as I said before, that I, it does create quite visceral changes in the people who take it, in that we are all part of the city. We are all, well, everyone who's coming to UCL next year, we're all in London, one of the biggest cities in the world. And so once we're kind of engaging with our cities and really understanding what it is our cities do, how they function on us, how we function on them, that gives like a great freedom and try, try into understanding, you know, why we are like we are, why society is like how it is. So I think not only is the course, um, you know, really focused on case studies. So you're you're not just doing theory, but you're kind of seeing the kind of practical things that happen in the world. You're learning about great artists. Uh, an amazing art so something you know it's just i'm very excited about it because i love you know these artists work and then you're finding how to relate those case studies and theory together in order to think synthesize that into anthropological arguments so i think it's a fun course um i'd love you to take part and i'm looking forward to seeing you all next year 
Great. Thank you so much, Rafael. <laughs>